Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Leveraging Opportunities to Trade and Invest in Dominica, presented by the Caribbean American Alliance, the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, and the Dominica Association for Commerce and Industry. My name is Regine Polonis, and I am the co-founder of the Caribbean American Alliance. The Alliance was created in 2020 really because we wanted an opportunity to create stronger ties in the Caribbean, to promote strategic impactful investments, and to really put forward everything that the Caribbean has to offer. In 2022, we decided to partner with the Miami-Dade Chamber to really bring closer ties between the residents and the businesses in South Florida and the Caribbean and Caribbean diaspora. This is an event that we have today, which will be a series of multiple events happening this year, where we want to showcase the different opportunities in the Caribbean and the Caribbean diaspora, working with the Miami-Dade Chamber. I am very happy to be presenting soon the chairman of the Miami-Dade Chamber, Jeff Lozama. Jeff is the president and CEO of CMS International Group Core, a glazing company specializing in the distribution of high-end windows and doors serving South Florida, the Caribbean, Latin America. Mr. Lozama is the chairman of the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. A former chairman of the Haitian American Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Lozama serves on several boards, including the Miami-Dade County of International Trade Consortium, Reciprocal Ministries, and the Mandodo Humanitarian Foundation, to name a few. Welcome, Jeff. Jeff, I think you're on mute. <laughs> Good morning and welcome. My name is Jeff Lozama, as Regine says. I'm the chairman of the board of Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. It is such a great pleasure to be on this inaugural session of our um, of many trade opportunities or that we are having uh, to be able to give our members of the Cham of Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce the opportunity to, uh, to tap into the global trade. And this is uh, an amazing uh, event that we are about to present to our members. And I want to welcome our friends from uh, the island of Dominica, Mr. Brenton Hilaire, uh, Mrs. Hermina Augustine, and Matt and Walters. Um, we uh, thank you for taking the time to join us this morning. And this is going to be a great discovery for opportunities that exist uh, now in the island of Dominica. Uh, I won't take much time. There's a lot to be said today. And I'll turn this over back to Regine. And thank you and welcome to our members and welcome to our friends from Dominica. Thank you very much, Jeff. So at the Caribbean American Alliance, we understand that working with strategic partners such as the Miami-Dade Chamber and the Dominica Association for Commerce and Industry is the only way really for us to have impact and to really put forward the goals that we have. So we're very pleased to be presenting today the Dominica Association for Commerce and Industry. And next we have up Stefan. Stefan or Lizra? Lizra. Lizra is the executive director of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce for Dominica. So Lizra, please present yourself. Thank you very much. Great. great. Thank you so much, Regine, for the opportunity to um, speak with our viewers. We're really delighted as DIC to partner with the Caribbean American Alliance and the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce to be able to share opportunities for leveraging, um, leveraging trade and investment opportunities in Dominica. And when this partnership started, we looked at what are some important initiatives that we could do to add value to businesses on both sides, businesses who are in Dominica and businesses who are part of the network of CAA. And we're really delighted that for this first event, which shows tangibly our partnership, that we could share on our lovely island of Dominica. So we really look forward to all the viewers, all the listeners, really learning about what it's like doing business in Dominica. And as the Chamber of Commerce, anything that we could do to help facilitate your partnership with the Chamber, we look forward to doing that. So once again, we're here for you and we look forward to sharing through our pre presenters who are here today. And we do thank them for their partnership with the Chamber as well. So Regine, back over to you. 
Thank you, Lizra. So up next, we have Mr. Brenton Hilaire. Brenton is the Senior Vice President of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. He is also the Agency Manager for Sagricor Life Dominica and has in this position from January, has been in this position from January 2016. Mr. Hilaire is a certified John Maxwell coach teacher, trainer, and speaker, as well as a member of several national boards to include the National Standard Council, where he represents the chamber. Welcome, Brenton. Hi, good morning, and thank you for the introduction. Good morning to all our participants who are with us today. So I have the pleasure of speaking from the Chamber's perspective on the trends that we've seen in Dominica and the current state of affairs in Dominica. And I will go, the way best to go for it. Let me just share my screen. Could you just hold on a while, please? Okay, so the way best to go for it in a timely manner, as I know we have other presenters on this call this morning. So, you heard my introduction, I don't need to go into that anymore, but in terms of the Chamber, the Dominican Association of Industry and Commerce, we were formed in 1973. So we have been around for a while and our mission is to facilitate growth and development of Dominican's private sector, as we would understand that would most likely be the same mission with all the other chambers around the world. At present, we have 74 members and 65% of that fall within the MSME sector. Now, as a chamber, we represent our members by being on different boards in Dominica at present. For example, just to name a few, we are part of the National Standards Council of the Dominica Bureau of Standards. We are also a part of the International Airport Project. We're also a part of the Safety Nature Tourism Managed Experience, and there are also other organizations that we are part of to provide some value to our members. In terms of what we do for our members, we focus on advocacy, providing them with opportunities for networking, and also facilitating access to relevant training, just to name a few. So let's get into it, the business climate of Dominica. In terms of the political aspect of Dominica, we have a very stable government and they have been in power for the past 22 years. So we don't really anticipate any disruption to the private sector just by the nature of this government being so stable. And if you want to take a look at the Corruption Perception Index, which is an international agency that looks at corruption levels throughout the world, we stand at 45 of 180 territories that are currently being looked at. And initially, we were at 48 of 180 in 2020, and we went to 45. So I think that really sits well in terms of the legitimacy of our country and how strong we are in terms of good corporate governance. Also, for corporate tax, it's at a level of 25% at present in Dominica. In terms of the economic affairs of Dominica, so as of 2020, and this data comes from the World Bank, our growth rate was at minus 16.60%. Now, this does not come as any surprise. We know that in 2020, the entire world was affected with COVID-19. But what I should speak of is the previous growth that we experienced. For those who are familiar with Dominica, we encountered Hurricane Maria in 2017, which practically devastated our economy, devastated our infrastructure, the country. Um, that resulted in a minus 6.8% growth. Now, I know a lot of people believe that there was no hope for this country coming from Hurricane Maria. But if you notice the trend, in 2018, one year right after Hurricane Maria, we experienced growth of 2.2%. And in 2019, that was followed by further growth, going as high as 7.6%. So prior to COVID-19, Dominica's economy was actually improving and improving quite quickly. 
And I believe that really speaks well in terms of how this country is being managed by our government and the other stakeholders that are a part of it. Now, despite the fact that we have experienced negative growth in 2020, there is good news that I will share later down in this presentation. In terms of inflation, so from 2019 to 2021, we have been between 1.5 to minus 0.7, back to 0.5. So inflation is rather steady in our country, which is a good sign. In terms of the real interest rate in Dominica, as of 2018, it was 4.4%. In 2019, it went to 4.2%. 2020, 8.1%. And when I looked at the rest of the region, that was a similar trend. And I believe it is as a result of the pandemic, where most persons became conservative and decided to keep their money in the bank accounts in light of the uncertainty. So this is something that is not alarming to me. In terms of the social aspect of Dominica, our population has been growing consistently, though some might say not by enough of a leap. So we have been moving from 71,600 to 71,800 to 71,991 as of 2020. Once again, this data is taken from World Bank. Now, we do have cases of our young members of society living to further their education. But despite that fact, we have still experienced, as you can see, continuous growth in our population. And I believe that is highly attributable to the fact that a lot of foreigners are actually setting up their homes in Dominica and actually investing in Dominica, making this island their place of residence for the future. In terms of our per capita, as you can see, once again, ties back to the growth that we spoke about previously. In 2017, it was at a low because of Hurricane Maria. But from 2018 going on to 2019, you saw the growth in it, but it reduced again back to 7,000 USD. Uh, once again, as a result of COVID-19, nothing that we should be alarmed about because there are good signs for the future prospects of Dominica. Growth rate has been declining, but the data is only available up to 2017. But despite that fact, as mentioned earlier, our population is still growing steadily. In terms of technology, so we have established the Ministry of Public Works and the Digital Economy, and their vision is resilient infrastructure, integrated technology. And coming from that ministry, there has been the development of the National Digital Transformation Strategy, which is really geared at enabling our entrepreneurs, the private public sector, even civilians, to make use of the benefits that technology presents. So our government has been working very actively in getting us ready to take advantage of all the benefits that it has to offer. Generally speaking, when we looked at a report from Hootsuite, 70% of our population has access to internet and actively use internet. Now, that has not grown over the past three years, but I believe it still represents a large number of our population. What we have seen growing, though, is the increase in use of social media. So in 2020, it stood at 54% of our population but in February of 2022, it grew from 54 to 63%. So that shows us that our society is now really starting to get a full grasp of what technology has to offer, the different platforms that are available. And I believe that with this ministry that I spoke about previously and the strategy that they have in place, this number is only going to continue and grow in, in the future. In terms of our environmental aspects of Dominica, generally we have a very supportive, I would say, mindset towards Go Green. We pride ourselves as the nature island of the Caribbean, and it's not just in talk, but you will find that through legislature and just with the way that we live as well. One prime example of that is in 2020, our government passed legislature to ban 
the use of single-use plastics in our market and also styrofoam plates and cups. I believe we were one of the first islands or first countries to do so. So it's not just about speaking about nature, but we actively pursue it. In terms of what else the government has done to support this, the Dominica Geoformal Development Company was registered in 2016, and I will share a little bit more information on that as we go forward. I believe that we don't have any air or water pollution in Dominica. We are very big on ecotourism here. And coming up from the pandemic, we also established the Safe in Nature Work Program, where there was an opportunity, there still is an opportunity for persons to relocate to Dominica to work remotely. In terms of the legal aspects, just to highlight a few areas for persons considering investing in here. We do have employment laws. Um, they fall under the Protection of Employment Act, the Labor Standards Act, the Labor Contracts Act, and also Employment Safety Act. But there are many other laws which are also available on the website that I have listed on the slide. So what are the things that we can look forward to in this beautiful island of ours? What we have seen over the past two years is the growth of our MSME sector, and that can be highlighted also in the makeup of our membership. As I mentioned at the start of this, right now about 65% of our members fit within the sector. And we believe that there are many more persons, individuals, entities that fit within that sector that we have not yet captured. But with the advent of this pandemic, we realized that a lot of people saw opportunity in becoming entrepreneurs and this may have spiraled the growth these different sectors. So we have found the emergence of several agro producers. Basically, these are the groups who take the raw products and make our products from it. So essential oils, food products, beverages, root crops, and so on have been coming into our market. The Dominica Youth Business Trust has also been lending their hand in that aspect where they have worked to set up some standards for agro producers. In agriculture as well, the Bureau of Standards in Dominica is also playing their part. Uh, they recently got 10 farmers certified to be organic farmers. So they are also working alongside in terms of where the opportunity exists in Dominica. And also, I believe that this is not unique to Dominica, but we have seen the emergence of several business support organizations as a result of the pandemic. So you have persons right now who provide services such as bookkeeping, digital marketing, logistics, finance, and a lot of them do that digitally. That's one thing that the pandemic has taught us. How do we operate without having to have that face-to-face -face interaction? So Dominica has been doing a very good job in capturing those opportunities. Outside of the MSME sector, there has been significant growth and work towards building up our private sector. One of the biggest sectors, I would say, and the biggest emerging ones is the hospitality sector. Yes, we already have one, but we have several new hotels that have been developed under our CBI program, that is the Citizenship by Investment Program. And that also presents itself with opportunities for complementary services, such as restaurants, bars, sightseeing activities, fun activities. So we believe that this will also be a very big part of our economy as we go in the future. Continuing our look at it, our economy has done well in adapting during the pandemic. Just like every other country in this world, we were afflicted by it. Um, we had to make changes, but we found that a lot of our members and also the private sector outside of our membership have done a very good job in moving away from this sort of brick and mortar setup to becoming e-commerce ready. Then I have access to moratoriums. One of the things that happened during the pandemic was that our lending institutions gave the front loan payments for our private sector members. Now I still have this here because what I've realized is that even if we have gone past the pandemic, the severe part of it, the lending institutions, I believe, are still willing to work with the private sector. So they are 
willing to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations, sit down, understand the needs, and see how they can work with the individual rather than just taking a sort of rules-based approach or a hardline approach. While we have that support from the learning institutions on island, we have also been getting a lot of support from our, our governments again. They have provided small business grants. They have provided small business support loans. And recently, a new loan facility was established where new and existing entrepreneurs are able to access finance at favorable rates. Now, I mentioned previously that our growth reclined to minus 16% as a result of the pandemic that was as of 2020. However, in the IMS recent prediction for Dominica, based on interacting with our government, the different stakeholders, they have predicted that our economy is going to grow by 5% from 2022 to 2026. Now, I believe that speaks wonders for the prospects of Dominica in terms of the economy and every other factor attached to it. Um, with such growth, once again, coming from Hurricane Maria, coming from COVID-19, it really speaks to the effective management of this economy on this island by our government. And it really puts Dominica in a prime position for persons who are interested in investing here and really seeing the returns coming back to them. One of the big things that happened for us, uh, this has really brought about, I would say, an immediate impact on our economy is direct flights to Dominica. This was recently established by American Airlines in December 2021. And initially, it started off with two to three flights a week. So right now, daily flights have coming from Florida to Dominica. And now I believe that speaks for itself. The fact that American Airlines saw the need to increase its daily flights really shows that there is interest in Dominica. I recently tried it on myself. Going up to Florida, the plane was full. Coming back to Dominica, the plane was full again. So there is a lot of interest in this island, and I really believe that speaks to the future prospects of us. Now, there are some major capital projects that are on the way. Some have just begun. Some are currently going on. One of them, which a lot of us are waiting for, is the International Airport. Work has commenced on that in terms of looking at the land and putting down the plans. We have also, as I mentioned, looked at the geothermal aspect of Dominica. Starting in 2016, work is continuing on that, so we are all waiting for that as it's going to reduce the cost of doing business in Dominica. Also, there are plans which was recently announced on our radio news program to construct solar farms in Dominica. So that also is going to help to reduce the cost of doing business in Dominica. In terms of technology, just to put some numbers to the growth of the social media presence or the use of social media by our population. From 2019 to 2020, there were 4,000 additional users. 2020 to 2021, 3,000 additional users. 2021 to 2022, 3,005 additional users. So you can see a steady, significant growth in our population becoming more acclimatized with technology, the use of technology, which in itself presents an opportunity for businesses. Because I know right now, a lot of businesses are actually using technology in order to acquire new clients. Now, businesses in Dominica have been doing a good job, as I mentioned, in adapting. So we've seen increased social media engagement from them. A lot of them have created their websites as a result of the pandemic. Mobile apps have been created. So both the private sector, the public sector, the clients have been moving in the same direction as it pertains to the use of technology. And I mentioned the public sector because our government has also created e-payment systems, access to forms, all of that is online to increase the ease of doing business in Dominica. Then we have had a few, I believe, e-commerce platforms who have emerged. And what that has really done for us is that while it makes doing business in Dominica easier in terms of our local agro producers and farmers, it also now introduces them to the international market. Uh, with now the direct flights to American Air, sorry, through American Airlines to Florida, 
One has to wonder how far can this go in terms of the linkage between our agro producers and the market in America. So we believe a lot can happen from that. We are also effectively pursuing the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project. This is a project that we are working in collaboration with the World Bank. Um, work has been started on this to the extent that the department has been established. Our private sector has been given the opportunity to showcase how they use technology in their businesses. So that has been done actively. In terms of the political trends that we have seen, the government has become very active in pushing the MSME sector. So at the same time that the MSME sector has been growing, they have also been doing their part to continue that growth, to spur that growth on. So for example, we recently partnered with the government and the OAS in having an entrepreneurship hub. There is now the draft Uh, it seems that we have lost Brenton for a minute, so we're going to move on. Unfortunately, he might have some connection problems, so we're going to move on to Hermina. Um, place to support oh, Brenton, you're back. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. We, we have lost you for a while, so we thought that you had gotten disconnected. Okay, go on. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thanks for letting me know. Where was the last part that you got me from? No. You can go on, you can go on. Okay. All right, so in terms of the political support, once again, from our government, there is the Green Climate Fund, and I know that opportunities are actively being pursued under that for our private sector. And at present, in terms of COVID-19, the protocols are being reviewed. So we recently have the benefit of relaxed entry protocols. That is, once you are fully vaccinated, you are able to enter Dominica without having to do any COVID, sorry, antigen or PCR test. That is, I believe, perfectly in line with the direct flight coming from Florida to make traveling easier. The government also recently opened up businesses, so bars are now open. I mean, protocols are still being encouraged, sanitizing, wearing of masks, but Government is working with the private sector and the population in order to open up the country so that money can start flowing once again. In terms of social, I mentioned previously, a lot of foreign nationals have begun coming to Dominica to start setting up businesses. And some of the businesses that they have set up fall under the lines of construction, architects, business support organizations, merchandise, restaurants, insurance. So the fact that this has been happening year on year really speaks to the fact that Dominica is becoming a very prime island for investments. Now, in summary, we are ripe and ready for business, in my opinion, and opportunities exist, whether it's through a partnership, a new venture, or even funding existing ventures. But what I would recommend is, first, if you are interested in coming here, Looking at the opportunities, you should definitely reach out to the Invest Dominica Authority. And once you have gotten past that stage and you've set up your business, I would definitely also recommend that you become a member of the local chamber so that we can be your advocate, your voice, and help you to continue to build your business in Dominica. So I understand that questions will be held at the end. Uh, this is my presentation. Thank you very much, Brenton. Lots of great information there. Lots of things that I didn't even know yet. The geothermal plant, solar farming, which has opportunities for so many things coming along. I'm sure we're going to get a lots of questions at the end. Thank you so much for your presentation. Well done. And now we'll be bringing up um, Hermina. Hermina Augustine is a senior investment officer at Invest Dominica Authority.
Invest Dominica Authority is the government agency mandated to promote and facilitate investment in Dominica. In addition to several target markets, which include North America, the Dominican, the Dominica diaspora is also a niche to attract new investors. Hermina Augustine is a senior investment promotion officer leading the marketing team to attract foreign direct investment. Recently, a new investment promotion strategy was launched, and the authority is excited to present the top sectors with the most ready opportunities. Welcome, Hermina. Good morning and welcome. Thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here and with the, the Miami-Dade, Miami-Dade Chamber, as well as the you from the Caribbean America Alliance. Let me just share my screen with you. Okay. Hope you can see my. I'll be doing a short presentation this morning on investment opportunities in Dominica. And. Uh, just a brief overview on Dominica being green on the sectors that we have available, the citizenship by investment program, and also support and incentives. Dominica is just about 751 square kilometer island, tropical island in the Caribbean. So we're almost like you guys in, um, or you guys are almost like us since we all have almost like a tropical, you know, the same tropical climate. Uh, Dominica is also 15 minutes by air from each of the nearby French islands of Martinique and, um, and Guadeloupe. Uh, we have a dem democracy in terms of our political um, establishment. Our available workforce is just over 32,000, a population of close to 75,000. Corporate tax for those of you who are interested in doing business, corporate tax is at 25%. The time to register a business right. takes 12 days. Hermina, sorry to cut in. Um, unfortunately, we're not seeing your screen yet. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to jump back down and then... Sorry about that. No problem. You know, technical difficulties sometimes. We've all had... If not, we can try and do it from the back end, if that works. Okay, please. Okay. Do you, not, do you have it now? Can you see my presentation no. now? We can't see it yet, but um, we can follow with you if it's yet. Okay, I think I got it now. Okay, perfect. Okay, go you ahead. Now? Thank you. Okay, sorry about um, that. I'm going to I did not stop that. down and then you'll be able to present. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, okay, sure. So, sorry about that. Great. So, just some general information I was given on Dominica the GDP to tourism 38.3% and to agriculture 17%. Now, Dominica is what we call uh, you can go in. It's green and Hermina, you can go in full screen mode so that people can see. And then I'm going to drop down. OK, I'm on full screen mode now. Dominica is, the, is literally the only island known as the Nature Island. 
60% of the island is covered in rainforests. We have an abundance of rivers, waters, and lakes. Uh, we also have the potential, a lot of natural resources with the potential for solar energy. We are looking at a 10 megawatt geothermal plant, which is to be constructed by next year. 33% of our energy is already generated from hydro. Uh, the island has uh, about 33% as well, which has you know just rich um, agricultural land, and we have a tropical climate all year round. So, government recently developed a sustainable plan to become climate resilient by 2030. So we are very focused on attracting sustainable foreign direct investments, and we are hoping that we can get some of this from the Miami-Dade area. Dominica is a leader in environment and preservation, and we also have a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now, why Dominica for investment? We have several untapped and undiscovered business opportunities which exist. We have a, a people 95% educated, and a ready workforce, which is also multilingual due to uh, migration. So we have several people from, from Haiti, from the Dominican Republic and other islands who have um, moved to Dominica. Natural resources are in abundance. We are a certified safe destination to travel. You do not require any online forms or anything like that. And the Nature Island brand, which we call ourselves, is actually in sync with the current trends for niche, high-end, and sustainable investments. Our competitive um, real estate rates are very good. We also have some very competitive labor rates as compared to the other, island, the other islands. We have a resilient um, IT infrastructure. We have like three telecommunication providers and flexible and tailored incentives through very supportive um, legislation, and I will speak a bit more on my last slide on the support that we can provide. Now, in terms of the sectors, as I said, we in the, through the introduction, you learned that we, are, we just launched a new um, investment promotion strategy and four key sectors, which I'm going to run through, were identified. Tourism. Tourism was already uh, an investment sector, but we are looking at niche ecotourism, which we would like to expand and uh, really use to grow our economy. Dominica is the nature island's paradise. So with all the green and the water, we have a 14 segment hiking trail, the second largest boiling lake in the world, three national parks, so much to offer that we actually have what it takes to really present a very high end, um, low impact ecotourism product in Dominica. Some of the opportunities you will get there are for resorts and lodges. We already have some very high-end um, resorts like uh, Secret Bay, Rosalie Bay, Jungle Bay, uh, tour and wellness service providers. Because with the increase in tourism, we're going to need more service providers who can help promote, help sell the various packages. E-commerce branding and marketing, especially in, this, in line with our e-commerce and uh, clean technology. We're looking at upgrading all hotels that everyone can have some aspect of, uh, of green, some aspect of re renewable energy, some you know being more sustainable. Uh, also, in terms of an opportunity, marina development, Dominica, several yachts come to Dominica each year. We actually have a yacht in season, but we do not have a marina. So there are sites which have been identified for marina development. The other investment sector is knowledge services, which covers a broad area in terms of uh, IT, uh, BPO, the BPO sector call centers, and the Dominica, the government of Dominica did extensive work in terms of improving the infrastructure. We have fiber running throughout the island. And because of that, it has made knowledge sector, the knowledge service sector very possible. So for those of you with interest in that, we um, would really like to speak with you further. There has been a special department which was created just to lead Dominica in terms of a digital economy. And currently, several new businesses have emerged from this. So again, we encourage you, if you have any interest, to let us know. Some of the opportunities we are looking at, again, is uh, the, the outsourcing, call centers, e-commerce services, 
small and medium enterprise financing and insurance solutions, innovation centers and entrepreneurial ventures, emerging sectors opportunities as well, which can link to other sectors such as agriculture and fishing and tourism. We have several connections which can be done through the knowledge services. The next sector is the organic agriculture and aquaculture sector, which is also a very ready sector here in Dominica with several opportunities. Again, as we are blessed with a lot of water, fertile soil and resourceful people, Dominica is very well positioned to lead in the revival and growth prospects for the agricultural sector in the region. So we have repositioned ourselves and we would like to encourage those of you with interest in organic agriculture, in aquaculture, in sustainable fishing as well, to consider Dominica for these investment opportunities. And we're looking at vertically integrated agriculture, aquaculture and fishing operations, in-house processing, packaging and labeling, affordable uh, and rec internationally recognized certification. This is something we're also working at to have our organic products fully certified so we can reach out to inter more international markets, agri-tech and fish tech, uh, tracking surveillance equipments and other equipment which can be used to ensure that the, these sectors can be more seamlessly managed online. Supply chain opportunities, of course, is a must in terms of trading, park, parking, exporting, and distributing of these products. A financial finance pro providers as well, would, is also, there's an opportunity there to provide support, financial support and joint venture with other small, smaller uh, local companies in these areas. Renewable energy is the next and maybe almost an obvious um, investment sector for us here in Dominica. The island has, you know, an abundance of sunshine, water, wind, geothermal energy. And because of this great location that it has here in the Caribbean islands, you know, we are really ready to expand in renewable energy. And as you heard it from the previous presentation, government is also looking at the development of a geothermal plant. So there's the opportunity for retrofitting uh, off-grid solar and wind generators. And this can be done for public buildings, for hotels and other, um, other major establishments. Renewable energy storage systems for off-green wind and solar power, capacity building as well, and training, maintenance services, and sector skill training, all of these within the renewable energy to support the, the expansion of renewable energy in Dominica. Grid expansion and strengthening, and also when we look at renewable energy, especially with the geothermal energy, there are several downstream industries which can be further developed and as a result you know of that sector so we are really looking at areas like drying of agricultural produce canning of manufactured items heating of spas in the wellness industries and heating of greenhouses so all of these are areas i would like you guys to take a look at as we um, present our opportunities in dominica Certainly research and development. Research and development can also go in some of the other, in some of the other sectors like the organic agriculture um, sector as well. The citizenship by investment program was mentioned. Again, uh, for those looking at second citizenship, we do have a program for this. It is done for an independent government or department, the citizenship by investment unit. The contact information is right there. You could please look up uh, cbiu.gov.dm and you can get more information if you're looking at second citizenship. Support and incentives. The government of Dominica supports all these investment projects and adopts non-discriminatory legislative policies. Additionally, many government support organizations, ministries provide assistance during the investment process. So legislation is in place for a range of fiscal incentives and these are all tailored in the very for the, to support investment in all sectors and keep in mind that 
even the sectors are not limited to the four main sectors which we are driving now with the new strategy. There are several other ideas that you may have, which you think that as long as you think that it fits into, into our economy, it can it will grow the economy, it will create in, it will create employment. We welcome other areas of investment that you may have, and you will also be you will also uh, be able to get in, incentives from government for your other areas of investment. Once you have chosen Dominica as your primary place for investment, so we're looking at duty-free importation of building materials, fixtures and fittings, uh, and any articles for um, hotel, furnishes, equipment, and so on, um, operation, v operational vehicles, duty-free importation on building materials, fixtures, and raw and packaging materials for manufacturing enterprises. Again, whether you're in manufacturing or in tourism, you can, you will be entitled to get a, have duty-free um, importation on what you need. Exemption from the payment of VAT on capital imports up to the commencement of operations. And also foreign investors can repatriate 100% of their profits. So there's no restrictions on your profits. Exemptions from the payment of withholding tax on dividends, investment payments, and other relevant external payments. And also tax holidays where you can get as many as 15, based on your 15 years tax holiday based on your level of investment. So we encourage you to take a look at the, these incentives that we offer and make Dominica your place to invest. Now your next steps for us at Invest Dominica, the agency which is responsible for facilitating investment, you already have a great start by just, you know, just this engagement that you're having here this morning. So what do you do next? Identify your sectors of interest and you may have a, bu a business meeting with us. We may meet with you in Miami or you may join us down here and we will provide more information to you on the business environment and what you really need to guide you through. Request more details and introductions regarding businesses for sale or joint ventures of interest. Inform us of your preference for lease or purchase of real estate and whatever is currently available, we will work with you. You may want to purchase or you may want to lease. Prepare for a site visit to Dominica and confirm your intended plans with us here at Invest Dominica. Continue to communicate with, with us here. I will be your primary contact to facilitate all your needs. We Perfect. look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Thank this you is the very end of your presentation much. If you have any questions. Thank you very much, Ermina. That was great. I think we will definitely be coming down to Dominica instead of you meeting us here in Miami. So we can come and see the beautiful island. Um, so many opportunities there. I think it's so interesting. I love hearing about the organic agro industry, um, the development of that sector. Uh, thank you very much. We will be sharing all of the contact information. Um, thank you again. The next speaker that we have is Matin Walter. Matin is a career trade official for 15 years. He has led the division of trade and function as chief trade advisor to the government of Dominica for the last eight years. Um, and he, his area of study is law, where he, is, he has pursued a master in public international trade law with a focus of international trade. Welcome, Matin. Thank you, thank you very much. Am I being heard clearly? Yes, go ahead. Excellent. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know how am I going to make an impression after the last two presentations made, um, but of course, I'm going to try my best. Um, firstly, I want to extend, you know, warm greetings um, on behalf of my Honorable Minister, Honorable Ian Douglas, and um, our new permanent, um, acting permanent secretary, Ms. Um, Rudet Aptis, and to express the sentiments of a successful forum. And I also want to state for the record that I feel privileged to be invited uh, and to be allotted time to simply speak to existing trade opportunities where Dominica is concerned. Dominica has always enjoyed historical trading relationships with many nations. However, what we have done is to move working within our OECS and CARICOM um, um, 
constructs, meaning working through, uh, working regionally, to formulate and to put in place legal frameworks to facilitate preferential trade and therefore enhance market access opportunities, not only in favor of our citizens, um, but also in favor of investors alike. And, and we like to encourage either single or joint venture related initiatives. And you'd find that Dominica works within the CARICOM or OECS structure because um, we are um, contingent on provisions of the treaties that we have signed. The, the, uh, the revised treaty of Chagoramas for CARICOM and the revised treaty of Bastère for OECS, our trade policies to a large extent are supposed to be formulated in some sort of coordinated or, or, or harmonized effort. And so we move in that regard to negotiate trade arrangements with partner countries. Presently, Dominica is a party to the following um, trade-related arrangements and agreements. The first one would be the overarching or umbrella organization, which is the WTO, and Dominica has been a founding member of the WTO since 1995. And I am very pleased to say that one of the the outcomes of one of our, our ministerial conferences was the, uh, the culmination of the trade facilitation agreement, which is meant to simplify rules and procedures and to help businesses by savings in, in time and cost for the movement of goods across borders. We in Dominica have been able to implement so far about 97.1%, at least over 90%, of the measures which are necessary to allow a smoother business transaction um, as it relates to doing business within the Commonwealth of Dominica. So we are, of course, a member of the World Trade Organization. We also have agreements negotiated within CARICOM with countries such as Colombia. And of course, we are pursuing revised negotiating mandates at the moment, uh, but this is taking place between um, Colombia and the more developed member states of CARICOM. So uh, Dominica has indicated where its interests lie in the, in the context of those agreements, which really is in relation to cooperative opportunities. Uh, how can we enhance cooperation and benefit our citizens by extension and also in the area of services? We have agreements with uh, the Dominican Republic. We have agreements with Cuba, uh, with Costa Rica, and of course, with Venezuela. We also have a Caribbean waiver, which um, we embrace. And I know one of our, one member of the Dominica Manufacturer Association, at least, is using that agreement to move um, organic related uh, herbal, herbal products, capsules, et cetera, um, into Canada. So that, that, uh, that assists us very well. As you also know, we also have the Caribbean Basin Initiative, which has been working um, for us as it relates to trade with the United States um, of America. And we have the economic partnership agreements, you know, which are presently between CARI, CARI Forum, of which Dominica is a member, and the European Union, and the United Kingdom, which is really a rollover arrangement that we have with them so that we can be able to continue to benefit um, from the provisions of the initial CARICOM Cari Forum um, Euro European Union agreement that we had. The EPA arrangement, of course, the EPA arrangements are vitally important to us, not only because of the development dimension of that particular agreement, um, but also because of the fact that we have had very long relationships with the French Dons, Guadeloupe, Martinique, for example, and they hold um, quite a few trade-related opportunities for our local citizens and, of course, for investors alike. And this agreement does allow that legal platform uh, so that you know, persons who have manufactured products within Dominica's municipal plane, and those products can be seen to be of community origin, or they are seen to be made from within the CARI Forum member states or the EU, they can enter those particular countries duty-free. And that, of course, gives us a competitive advantage um, in those in those French dorms and in countries across Europe. So those agreements are vital importance. Um, even in relation to engagement with the United Kingdom, we do have um, 
small small uh, businesses that that send their products across. Um, we're talking about things such as you know oils and, and condiments, um, pepper sauces, you know lip glosses and all that, and they can be able to use a particular form and format at the border, which allows them, as long as those products are considered to be generically from within uh, the, the partners to that arrangement, they have duty-free entry into that country. And of course, it allows them that kind of premise for more a more competitive environment for their product. So that is the, the vitally important aspect um, of having those market access related arrangements. Um, they don't immediately give you market entry. Market entry has to be sorted out and we continue to, to work in that regard. The market entry requirements would, would be meeting with certain uh, standards, um, certification requirements from those member states, um, but working within our own um, Bureau of Standards, working very closely um, with our CROSQ, our Caribbean Regional Organization for Standards and, and, and Quality, we are able, of course, um, to allow our products to breathe comfortably um, in those markets and allow our producers to benefit from the same. I know that the time is limited and I don't want to monopolize the floor too much, um, but I want to speak just a little bit to two things. One of them is our long historical trade relationship with the United States of America. And as a region, for example, CARICOM, um, we imported at least uh, latest statistical uh, and refined data in 2018, about $9.4 um, billion worth um, of products from the United States of America as CARICOM. And we exported about $3.5 billion US dollars worth of products to the United States of America. Dominica in, in particular, you know, we continue to um, import a variety of products from the United States. We import a lot of our fishing reels, which are very important to our fishermen, toys for our children, for example, wooden furniture and kitchen-related furniture. There's towels, there's pens, there's, um, there's also fuel-related products from the US. So we have a vibrant trading relationship with the United States of America. Um, where our export uh, to the United States is concerned, we look at products, we export products such as castor oils, bay oils, Dashin, which is ground provisions, our soup from one of our premier manufacturers, continue to go to uh, the United States of America. And um, we also have manicure and pedicure related um, preparations um, going to the United States. And I'm just naming a few of the products that we export uh, to, to, the, to the US. I would also want to, to uh, you wanted to say something, uh, Chair, moderator? No, I no, I wanted to think, unfortunately, we're a bit running out of time. So um, I know, I'm going to be extremely last... speedy. Perfect, go ahead. Believe me, I'm go going ahead. to conclude quickly. Um, where our services uh, are concerned, um, we would look at specifically, due to time, um, touristic tourism-related services. And pre-COVID, we had about 12,511 American tourists coming into Dominica. And even during the 2020-2021 period, we had just over 5,000 tourists still coming in to support um, Dominica's economy. And so far in 2022, we have about 2,734. Um, in relation to, to uh, putting in place the prerequisite policies um, so that one can conduct trade in a very predictable and transparent manner, um, Dominica has moved ahead in putting a national trade policy in place. Um, that has already been approved by draft um, by the cabinet of Dominica. And what is important about the, the, the policy document is not just uh, about um, the fact that it will allow us to bridge that export import gap that we have and at least um, be able to be more innovative in our export mix, um, but also to look at futuristic um, exports opportunities, such as in the blue economy, in the green economy, the circular economy, you know, um, use of, of refuge to, to, uh, to derive fuel, you know, conversion of plastic waste into fuel and all that, um, and to be more aggressive where our digital economy um, is concerned. Um, I had a little bit more to say, but I got the short end of the stick, you know, and that's okay. Um, so I'd have to round up here by simply indicating that if it relates to market-related opportunities in Dominica, there is no question about the fact that the frameworks have been created across the floor, across the board in Europe, where the, across the world, 
to be able to conduct trade in a manner that is going to allow those producers to have a competitive advantage on those particular markets. I want to thank you very much for your time. No, thank, thank you, moderator. You. Thank you very much, Math. And this will not be the only opportunity to present the opportunities in Dominica. So there will be many other opportunities um, to really, we have a few questions from the audience right now. So I'm gonna ask Elizabeth to come up um, and um, give us the questions for the different speakers on the panel. Um, but that being said, we will have other opportunities to further present the opportunities in Dominica and other islands. Lizra, go ahead, thank you. Great, thank you very much, Regine. And right now we just have two questions. I know that um, not everyone was able to join based on the live, but we have a question from Kamala Cummings and she is asking if there's an opportunity to invest in opening an Airbnb in Dominica. So we invite um, our panelists, whoever would want to be able to speak to this, to respond to if there's an opportunity to invest in the Airbnb and most likely that could be Hermina um, who may want to, to speak to that one. And I would just give the other question right now so that our panelists would be able to respond to them. Um, the other one is the requirements for the CBI program. So what is the requirements for um, being part of the CBI program in Dominica? These are the okay. Okay, I would like to go ahead and answer regarding the Airbnb investment. As with any other investment that you consider, you will you are required to do your your business plans, your do your market research. Um, you know, yes, the opportunities are there, but in terms of your specific product, what you intend to do, your location, this would be for you to do and really see if you know if there is um, if there is a need. And Airbnb has been on the rise. There are already several um, properties in Dominica which utilize Airbnb, plus an increase in hotel accommodation. So uh, we do have much less um, ho um, ready hotel stock rooms, especially since the hurricane in 2017. We, we lost some of our hotels. So we are really looking at more rooms and with the building of new hotels. So there is an opportunity. Um, Although if uh, if you decide to build something like an Airbnb, you would be able to, in order to qualify for concessions, you would be able to prove, you have to be able to prove that you can, you know, you will be creating employment and how it will really have, um, increase, you know, economic activity in Dominica. So Airbnb is, is again a very specific type of hotel accommodation. It does not fit in the regular hotel or guest houses, you know. So government is always very particular in terms of the type of products that come in. But Airbnb is available in Dominica and additional investments can be made. Regarding the CBI, for the person who inquired on the citizenship by investment, I would like to encourage you to go directly to the website. It does not fall under Invest Dominica. As I said, it's a government department, a separate unit which is set up for that. All the requirements are there, www.cbiu.gov.dm, or you may also send an email to cbiu at dominica.gov.dm. Just go directly to their website or through the government website, and you will see the agents who are available for, there's a list of approved agents of, by government. There's also uh, the projects which are currently approved and the, the, the payments per family or for a single applicant or if you're doing it with a, a real estate option, all the information is there. So I encourage you to, to, come, to just go directly to that website for this information. If there's any other information that you'd like to get on investing in Dominica, I would like to say that just a week ago, we launched our new website, investdominica.com. So our new sectors are there. Please feel free to visit our website, follow us on social media platforms, and you can get a lot more information on, on investing in Dominica. If not, contact me directly or send an email to info at investdominica.dm and all your questions will be answered. Thank you very much.
We had one more question, which were, what are the requirements related to the citizenship by investment? I don't know who can answer that question. Oh, it was answered. Ah, okay. Thank it you, Liz. It was answered, yes. Okay. Um, so we have our last um, speaker who is going to be joining us, Carl Montplaisir. So Carl currently serves as the board member for the Haitian American Chamber of Commerce of Florida and the vice chair of the Hackoff Foundation. He is the co-chair of the International Trade Committee at the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce and is a co-founder of the Caribbean American Alliance based in South Florida. Carl is a telecom professional with over 26 years of experience in commercial and operational success. He's worked with several senior telecom manager management teams across the U.S. and the Caribbean. Welcome, Carl. Thank you, Regine. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of the Caribbean American Alliance, the Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce, and the Trade Committee of the Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce, of which I'm grateful to be the co-chair, I want to thank everyone, especially our panelists here today, Brendan Hillier, Amina Augustine, and Matthew Walt. And our audience, thank you. Today is the start of an amazing journey for all the entities involved here. For me, it is a sign of strength and community partnerships with our Caribbean nations and its diaspora. So I want to personally thank all of you, and we are looking forward to many more of these conversations. My friends and colleagues, the opportunities presented here by our distinguished panelists are real. And it is our duty as friends of Dominica and partners to follow up with this team and act upon them. Let's do this. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you very much, Carl. So we are going to have closing words by Jeff. Jeff, are you there? Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Brenton, Hermina, Mathen, um, for the great opportunities, presenting the opportunities in Dominica. Um, this will be the first of many more events that we will have virtually and in person. I hand it over to you, Jeff, to close us out. Thank you, Regine, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Imami Day Chamber of Commerce on behalf of our president uh, and CEO, Mr. Eric Knowles, and our membership manager, Mr. Matthew Pigott, and the staff of um, Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we want to thank you um, for, for putting uh, this together, this uh, great and amazing presentation. We want to thank our friends in Dominica. Uh, a lot of great lessons learned this morning about Dominica. I'm very much interested myself in the opportunity that I hear from Dominica, especially in the building material sector. Um, I will make that trip and, uh, and we'll look into the opportunity of foreign investment in Dominica. Uh, this is the first of many presentation that we, um, Miami-Dade Chamber, along with our uh, International Trade Committee, in collaboration with CAA will present to our members. Uh, again, we just want to thank everyone for joining in this morning and uh, our great gratitude to our folks in Dominica. We'll see you soon there. Thank you so much. And great job, Regine, as always. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. And see you later, everyone. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. See you later, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining. It was a great event and we will see you all soon.